So I've been meaning to make some new treats for barley and I thought that it might be something that I should make on Facebook Live so that I could share with you how easy it is to make healthy homemade dog treats. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using canned salmon. I had some in my cabinet for a really long time. This salmon includes bones and skin and I'm going to include all of that including the liquid that's in the can. Um, bones once they get blended up. Hi, I see somebody's here. Um, anyway, once the bones get all blended up, they add a nice rich source of minerals and um, vitamins and stuff for the dog. So I'm gonna keep those in there. So what I'm gonna do is it only is three ingredients and I'm gonna pour them into the blender. I'm using three cans of the salmon. I poured two cans into my, uh, the container of my blender already and I have one more here so I'm gonna just add that in and get as much of that out as I can. I'm gonna move this away real quick. Okay all right so I've got that in here and then I have two eggs and I have chicken so I have a green egg which is really cool so I'm gonna put those in as well. Um, some people like to add the shell of the egg and I think I'm gonna skip it this time just because hi Kelly um, I'm gonna skip adding the shell because I um, I'm doing the bones of the salmon or whatever is in my can you can use tuna too if you want to or sardines or anything if you're gonna use sardines do it with um, the sardines in water all right so I'm gonna get the other egg in here okay and then the last ingredient is something that you might not expect. Okay, um, and it's tapioca flour. And I'm using tapioca flour um, for a couple of reasons. One of which is that it's a grain-free flour. So tapioca is like a, it's like a root or a tuber sort of thing. Um, and so it doesn't cause any allergies or reactivity in most dogs. Um, also, I was able to find this tapioca flour at my Asian market and this container is probably two or three cups worth and it was only 99 cents. And so for me that was like a smoking deal. Um, you can buy like super nice fancy tapioca flour like Bob's Red Mill sells it at Whole Foods or whatever, but that's gonna run you like six or seven dollars. But this was 99 cents. I'm gonna add in um, about a cup and maybe a cup and a half, maybe two cups actually. I'm gonna see how it looks. So I'm gonna just measure that off and this really isn't a precise recipe. So don't worry about don't worry about precision here. You're going to notice I'm not cooking the way I would if I were baking something like actual for my family. Um, so I'm not weighing it or anything. But I'm going to start with oof, a cup and a half or so and get that in here. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the bottom of my blender and oh hi Karen nice to see you I don't have my glasses on so when you guys are chiming in and saying hi I can't even read it from there it's really embarrassing that's what happens when you're over 45 years old anyway I'm gonna grab the bottom of the blender right here and I'm gonna pop this on plug it in and it's gonna get really noisy for a second um, it's pretty gross if you think about it like because this is the salmon, you can see some of the fat from the skin of the salmon. But these are good ingredients. So I like to think about feeding my dog kind of the way that I fed my kids. Um, a lot of you know that I had a cooking school for kids for a while. And so I try really hard to use ingredients that I recognize and human grade ingredients. In this case, this is pole caught salmon. So I know they're not harming the environment when they're catching it. Um, so anyway, Karen. Oh, I'll show you the mat in just a second. Thank you. I will show you the mat in one minute. Okay, the mat, um, Karen wanted to know about the mat that I'm using um, to make the trees in, and I'm going to show you guys that in just a second. Um, so this is kind of like awesome homemade treats using real ingredients. It's like the anti-junk food for dogs. Okay, it's going to get really loud for a second, so bear with me here. Okay, 
If I don't hold on to this, sometimes it tries to jump off the counter. Hi, Elizabeth. I'm glad you're here. You can cook for ginger. Okay, so this is good. I'm going to just move the base away. I think it's actually the texture that I want. And because I'm cooking salmon, it's kind of pink. So don't drink this, don't get confused. Your house is gonna stink too, by the way. I apologize in advance. What you're gonna wanna do is probably open a bunch of windows before you bake this off. Okay, now Karen reminded me to tell you about the mat that I'm using. Um, I got these mats, so I have it on a cookie sheet. That's because it's made of silicone and it's floppy. And when I'm moving it to the oven, I know I would spill it all over the place. So I just put it on a cookie sheet and then, um, hi Tina. Um, so I have it on the cookie sheet so I can carry it to the oven without spilling everything. But let me show you this thing. Okay, so on the other side of the mat, it's got these little, let me see if I can get the texture. See how they bump up? So I think originally this is a tool that is meant to put on your counter and then you put like greasy cooking spoons on it or whatever. And then the yucky stuff just sinks into this instead of dribbling all over your calendar. I mean, counter, not calendar, sorry. Anyway, but. If you flip it upside down, it, um, it's got holes. See how it's holes versus pyramids? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this paste that I just made and pour it over these holes and push it kind of in with a spatula. And then when, the, when they bake, which I'm not gonna make you wait for because that'll take too long, but I'll show you the finished product later. Um, when they bake, you can pop them out of here and they look like little pyramids. What I like about this shape is that they don't bounce when you're throwing the treat. So I do a lot of find it. It's like Karen knows I showed her how to play find it with Ginger. Um, and when you're doing nose work with dogs and you're um, trying to reward the dog at a particular location, when you drop a treat that is round or bouncy, it'll like roll away. Like I used to use kibbles and they just roll all over the place. And so, hi Amy. So anyway, so instead of using a treat that um, is gonna roll away on you, if you use something in this particular shape, it tends to drop and it stays where it is. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this on here and I think you guys can see, and I have two trays worth. If you order this on Amazon and I can show you guys the link on, um, like in the notes of this, the comments of this video, I can give you a link for this mat. It's a silicone mat and it comes in a set of two. So if you, I figure that for the effort that I'm making to make this treat, I might as well make a whole ton of them and then I'll store a bunch of them in the freezer and as a block bag. Um, but if you're nice, then you could just give your friend one of the trays and you can keep one of the trays. Or if you're even nicer, you keep both trays and then give your friends some of the treats that you make because you make a lot of them. Okay, so you can see that this is all runny and gloppy. Um, it's really kind of gross. See it dribbling? Okay, so the way that I do it, um, and I've only done this once before because they lasted a super long time, is I'm gonna just use the spout from my blender and I'm gonna just pour it, um, I'm gonna just pour it onto the mat and then I'm gonna use the spatula and kind of smooth it out and then I'll pour it onto the other mat. So it might get boring for a second, sorry. Um, let me see, can you see it if I, if I have it down here? Yeah, you can see. I'm so short that if I work up here, I'm gonna spill all over the place. So I'm gonna do it here instead. Okay, so let me just try to get some of this off here. Okay, so it's really runny, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pour it onto my mat, like this, and just kind of, get it all over the place. And then I'm gonna spread it and see if I need to pour it anywhere else. Yeah, okay. That's not blocking you, is it? It's good, Tina. Oh, you guys are so cute. Yeah, you guys should totally share the mats. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the backside of a spatula. I think you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna spread it like this and just go all over and try to get it into the holes as much as I can. Um, because it's a silicone mat, it's also kind of non-stick. And so when you flip it over after you have finished baking the recipe, all the little pyramids just flop out and um, land on your cutting board or wherever. Um, so it's really super. You can also make the, um, make the batter and 
pour it into a jar in the fridge if you don't have time to make the batter and to bake off the cookies at the same time. Just label it because your kids are going to think it's a smoothie. That's a really bad thing. My daughter was like, ooh, what's this? And she opened it and she was like, ah, oh, this is disgusting. Okay, so um, you can kind of see, I'll bring it closer. Um, I'm trying to get it into all the holes and it doesn't always fit. It's also nice that I'm over, um, that I'm over a cookie sheet because if I overflow on the edges then it's not gonna get all over the bottom of my oven. Okay. So this is where we're at, and I'm not going to make you watch me do the second one, but I'm going to do another one, and then I'm going to put these in the oven so you guys can kind of see how flat it gets. And you can see where I have extra streaks, and I'll probably try to get them into the edges, but pretty much all of the little triangles, pyramids are filled. And so I'll do the second tray. Um, I have the oven set for 350 and I'm gonna bake them for about 40 minutes because I like mine dry and crunchy. You can also make them in such a way where they're like chewier. I have a friend, Katie, who um, likes to do them out of ground turkey because she gets ground turkey somewhere that she likes and she uses ground turkey as her protein instead of um, salmon or tuna. Amy, if you're still here, what kind of protein do you like to use on yours? I know some people um, do tuna, sardines, I've heard other people even using ground beef if they want. Um, so whatever works for you, but you're gonna have to adjust probably by weight the value. Um, my cans of salmon were a little bit fatter. They're like one and a half times the can size of tuna. So when I write out the recipe for you guys, which I'll um, write and I'll put it on the blog on my website. Um, yeah, you can use chicken too, Tina. Um, so I will, I'll write this up and put it on my website maybe or on Facebook or something. Um, you guys are already here on Facebook, so that's a good spot. And I'll write up the recipe. I'm gonna do the recipe for um, regular size cans of tuna and then you guys can extrapolate it based on whatever other proteins that you're doing. So I'm gonna make the other one. I'm gonna bake them for about 40 minutes because I like them to be crispy. What I tend to do is store a bunch of them in a like a mason jar and I keep them in my refrigerator. And then the other batch I store in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. So I'm gonna finish pouring these, pop these in the freezer. Do you have any questions? I love that you guys are here, it's so exciting. If you have any other questions, you can ask. You can also ask in the comments below um, if you watch this as a, a rerun later on, um, and I'll check it later and I can answer any other questions that you might have. But I thought I'd do a little cooking demo and there's no reason you can't cook for your dog. So that's okay, it doesn't make you weird. It makes you devoted, right? Okay, um, I'm gonna sign off and finish my job, finish what I started. I'm really glad you guys were here and I love that you guys are collaborating on the mat. Um, I, I like to keep mine in the fridge. I don't think they have to be. You're dehydrating them. I don't think there's really anything in there that could spoil, but it's, you know, it's like egg and canned salmon, which is, you're taking it out of the can so it's no longer vacuum sealed. I just figure it's easier to keep in the fridge. Um, I just keep a jar of them in there and then I'll take out handfuls and put them in my treat pouch. So when I'm working with my dog, they're in my treat pouch and then we usually finish them and then I refill out of the fridge jar whenever. But I think that's probably a safer bet because it's kind of a homemade, no preservatives, which I think is good. Okay, I'm gonna sign off and get these guys in the oven. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, I love doing these videos too, they're so fun. Um, if you have other videos you want me to make, I'm totally gonna do that. I think that would be fun. It's not always cooking dog, dog food cooking videos, but any anything, dog training stuff is really fun. I like it. So anyway, I'll see you guys later. Um, I'll answer questions and I'll write in the recipe for you pretty soon. All right, take care, bye.